Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. We're back with the, I think this is 7th or 8th annual holiday gear guys gift guide. Something like that. This is the video. It's late. I'm tired. The video is going to be a rambling one. If you are not interested in the rambling, I would suggest you just skip to the video description below where I will link to everything I talk about in this video and more. What this video is, is me talking about stuff that I actually use. There is a ton of repetition from last year and the previous year because it is gear that I still am actively using. There's a bunch of gear that I use that I just didn't grab for the video because I didn't think of, but what this video is is basically I spend a day or two just kind of thoughtfully paying attention to the gear that I regularly use and seeing what of that gear kind of fits into gift, a gifting thing, so something that can kind of fit on a tabletop so I can show you something that's not too expensive. Most of these things are under 100 bucks. Some are a little more, but definitely nothing super expensive in this list. And yeah, a lot of people I know wish this video was me just talking about random cool gadgets and obscure gear because I know a lot of you guys are gear junkies and you just feed off of that random gear. And most of that stuff is going to end up in the back of the drawer or the landfill somewhere. So that is not this video. This video is just tried and true stuff that I use and you'll probably use too. So it's not trying to waste your money here. Not a single company has paid me a dime to show up in this video. Some of this stuff I've been sent for free or whatever, but... Nobody's paid me to be in this video. This is just all stuff I genuinely use. It's fully genuine, which hopefully if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you that goes without saying. But it's worth saying because people at company, I know as a creator, companies are throwing money at people to put these videos together. So they're becoming more popular. I'm kind of one of the OGs, but a lot of people now that are doing gift videos just know they're getting paid by these companies to be in those videos for show because I know and I'm too lazy to take that money unfortunately interestingly enough while I'm tired and really just wanting to be in bed right now there is a sponsor of today's video thank you Helix for sponsoring today's video premium mattresses shipped right to your door so I've never I've never treated myself to a nice mattress. So Helix reached out and wanted to send me a mattress. I was like, you know what? I'm dumb. I spend a third of my life in bed. Well, I spend a little less because I don't sleep as much as I should. But people spend like a third of their life in bed and just buy the cheapest, crappiest mattress ever. So they reached out and I was like, I'm going to jump on this opportunity. So they have a little sleep quiz. I did the sleep quiz. Ashley did the sleep quiz as well. And we kind of compared and contrasted which one we landed on. She really wanted a firmer mattress. Our mattress right now is really soft, which I think gives her back pains and stuff. So we went for the firmer mattress, which is the Dawn. So we went for the Lux Dawn. Thing is amazing. It comes... It's like they're made in the U.S. They're assembled in the U.S. technically, I think, with U.S. and globally sourced materials. But assembled and built in the U.S., which is rad. And then shipped to your door. Free shipping in the U.S. It's, I don't know how they roll it up so tight, but they, they wrap this uh, mattress up with, like, industrial saran wrap, essentially, and get it in a box and ship it right to your door. There's a 100-day trial period with the mattresses. They come with a 10-year warranty as well, and they have a whole lineup of mattresses. I went with the Lux, which is kind of seems like about medium, and then they have like an elite line as well. The whole Helix lineup actually is 20 unique mattresses to include the Helix Lux line, which is like an award-winning mattress, and then all the way up to their elite, like very nice mattresses. But yeah, it's worth doing the sleep quiz. It kind of pairs you up with back sleeper, side sleeper, stomach sleeper, and you kind of go through the whole 
process. I'll probably show it up on the screen here if I haven't already. And then they kind of suggest a mattress for you as well and kind of tell you about the mattress. And then before you know it, it's shipped and shows up at your door. But right now is actually the best time to buy because they're running a 27% off sale for kind of Black Friday, November. You go to helixsleep.com slash LLOD. Uh, that'll give you a code for the 20 27% off as well as two free pillows and receive a free bedding bundle with your Lux or Elite orders. So yeah, just go to helixsleep.com slash LLOD or use code helixpartner27 at checkout to redeem that. So thank you, Helix, for helping me sleep better at night now uh, and also sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to it. To just kind of get into it, I got a little eggnog bevy here in front of me. It is, just to give you some perspective, uh, I got two little kids recently. I'll talk about it when I can, when I can do it without crying, and some people will get mad at this, but uh, my, recently my dog died, and I have another dog, my, my main dog, my, my sole dog I had to put down. I have we have another dog, Maple, who's our smaller, anxious. We love her to death. She's a great dog, but kind of a joke of a dog. Very anxious, and you know the the exact opposite of my stoic, brave dog, Atreyu. Anyway, she's been having a real hard time, uh, as we all have with his passing, and so we got a new puppy. You'll meet him later. Uh, just a rescue dog. I don't know what he is. And so anyway, two small children, my my wife, Saint, she deals with them more than I do, but I deal with them as well, and a puppy, and a lot of crazy projects going on that all, all circle you in on eventually, and lack of sleep. I'm running on no sleep at all. So it's midnight right now when I'm finally decided to turn the camera on and start filming. Technically, it's 11... 50, 11.49 and 55 seconds. So I got to film, edit, and upload this video. So just to give you a perspective of where I am, this video is probably going to be the worst gift guide video so far if you aren't a fan of the channel. If I'm a random dude that you somehow stumbled upon the YouTube video, I'm sorry that you found me during this video. I swear I make better videos. But this one won't be one of my finest. But the OGs might enjoy it because I sit here, I ramble, we talk about gear, the stuff I like, you get a sneak peek inside of my head. And it's I always have a good time making them. So I, I feel like they get later and later each year. I really need to knock this thing out like all of the real YouTubers do and, you know, post this weeks ago. But here we are. I didn't even find a great order to put these in. They're kind of all spread out. So the, the video description down below with all the links, and I think you can go to llod.us slash gifts, and that'll take you to, to the listing. And you can see all the historical gift guides as well. Again, a lot of duplicative stuff this year and previous years. Hope you don't mind. I got some gifts, gift ideas that are also edible. I guess let's just start there, edible. So I'm eating Peak Refuel Cookie Bites. Great stocking stuff for idea for yourself or others. They make the absolute, they are a sponsor of the channel, but they make the absolute best freeze dried meals, but they also make some snacks. The freeze dried chocolate chip cookie bites are my favorite. I could live off them. You probably see me eat them. Uh, all the time in videos. I I just, I like them. Uh, snacks, we'll try and keep it real. Chomps, Chomps sponsored a video recently. They're not sponsoring this video, so they, I, don't, I don't have to talk about them all, but I genuinely like them. Chomps, the funny thing is, in the video that they sponsored, I mentioned that Ashley got these and put them in our stockings, I think two years ago. Great stocking stuff for idea. Chomps is just like a little, uh, Beef sticks, again, Chomps isn't sponsoring this video, so buy whatever brand you want, but Chomps is actually good and, and clean, so I like them. So some snack ideas, pretty cool. 
We're gonna talk a lot about a lot of tools and stuff like that. I'm gonna, we're gonna kind of be random in the beginning though. So I'm kind of looking around at random stuff that doesn't fall into any category. This one's funny. I was, again, lack of sleep. I roll my back out on this thing. It's called a chirp wheel. I'm sure there are a million knockoffs of this. I have no affiliation with the company. I don't even know if it's technically good for you or not, but it feels good. And it's just, I roll out my back on it and like cracks my back at the end of the day. Like I usually do it before bed and I'm just like, ah, it kind of feels like, you know, it just cracks my back essentially. Chirp wheel, pretty cool. It's like pretty small. I think they're pretty cheap. It's just a piece of plastic and some foam. I think it would make a good, good gift, honestly. I, I don't think I've ever talked about this ever, but I, I, I roll my back on it almost every day. So another random one, uh, I actually just bought some of these. These are EMP bags. I actually had just, uh, I had my ledger, my cryptocurrency ledger in just a kind of a regular bag that like a hard drive comes in to keep it somewhat protected. And then I decided to buy some EMP bags because we live in a crazy world. So I bought a kit that actually has like laptop size and everything. So I'm kind of EMP proof. Actually, while I'm talking about, I'm kind of EMP proofing everything <laughs> important in my life. My whole house is EMP proofed. My solar panels, my battery backups, my ham radios, my vehicles, uh, and I use a company called EMP Shield. Now, they again, they didn't pay me, nobody paid me to be in this video, but they have sent me some stuff and I do have an affiliate link and uh, I'll make as many of these if, if you if you feel like supporting me. Uh, I make money through affiliate links. That means you click it, sometimes it gives you a discount code even and then I'll get a percentage kickback if you use my link or code or whatever. But EMP Shield makes EMP Shield, we won't get into it, but you can call them, talk to their customer service with whatever questions you have or whatever testing they've done or what, like, we're not going to talk about it, but I've been EMP Shielding everything. I think the website's empshield.com and I have a code LLOD, I believe will save you. Save you a lot of money actually on their site. Anyway, a little EMP bag that I, I put in there. Mm, I think that's about... I think that's about it for, for kind of random stuff. Everything else I'll try to kind of drop into categories in some fashion or another, kind of like tools and things like that, and then EDC stuff, and then kind of camping stuff. So let's do camping stuff. So here is, I actually, this isn't really, you can use it camping obviously, but I actually use it just to start fires in my wood burning stove. I bring it up because I brought it camping. We were doing this trip and I brought it out because I was like, oh, maybe we'll make like a bonfire. It was snowing and, you know, fires were safe. Anyway, this is a little, I have a one pound propane bottle filler. It's, it's okay because I kind of use a lot of these for this. And then I bought this. this is just some random brand. I'm sure they have a ton of them, but it's a little uh, propane torch. You know, you use similar ones of these. It gets pretty crazy though. And I don't know, they're kind of fun. Anytime I, anytime I whip this baby out, it, it draws a crowd and people really seem to like it. So that's something you can use to, you know, start, start the fire pit in your backyard or start, uh, start a campfire when you're out camping or whatever. So camping gear. All right, let's get into the camping gear category. Uh, Gerber makes a really cool little utensil set that has like a spork and a spoon and a little mini spatula uh, and they all clip together really compactly and I really like them. I believe it's called the Com Complete, Complete, Gerber Complete maybe. A pretty cool uh, kind of camping utensil dealio. This is a Tox, I believe it's titanium. Some brands make them out of aluminum too. Long spork. If you're gonna get the peaks or the mountain houses or whatever, I could live off of those. I, I love eating them camping. I actually enjoy eating them camping and they're easy. And the best way to eat them, these are, I think, I think I had these out because I need to wash them actually. Best way to eat them is a long spoon. So this is a Tokes long spoon. You could eat cereal with it at home or whatever if you want, but they are the, they're the ticket for bagged meals 
really. Knife. This is still, I've talked about this knife. It's still my favorite fixed blade knife. It's relatively small for a fixed blade. It's the Lion Steel M4. Again, bought this, bought this knife full retail. I actually bought a few of them now full retail to have in various kits and stuff, but it's my favorite fixed blade knife. It's nice. Uh, it's M390, I believe, steel. So it's a really good, high quality steel and just mm, comfortable. Comfortable fixed blade knife. Uh, these are new. These are the Roto Packs. They just released these in olive drab green. These are water tanks, technically. So this is a water jug that can mount on a Roto Packs mount. Same as they've been for a long time, except limited release of olive drab and then also like a tan, like an FTE color. So I've actually, if you've been watching, I've been trying to incorporate these. Again, they're not paying me any money or anything. I've just get been setting up rack systems and stuff with little uh, water that comes out and trying to kind of implement these more because water jugs I've always brought out in the winter they won't be as handy because they just freeze where I am uh, but in the the spring summer fall these are going to be great to store water in and obviously olive drab green I like all things OD Here's an FTE, I actually have, they actually did a limited run of these that they sent a couple out to me. Uh, this is Agency 6 shovel, has like mounting hardware, aluminum made in the US. You know, this isn't your shovel that you're gonna be using to do like yard work and stuff. This is more of a, a camping piece of kit gear. So lightweight, small obviously, and it's just, to help with recovery, to help dig for a poop, uh, stuff like that. Again, made in the U.S. and just kind of the coolest, kind of the coolest shovels money can buy. So kind of a cool piece of gear, but obviously a functional piece of gear because it's a shovel. Maybe water bottles kind of fit into camping. I don't know. I'm longtime Nalgene uh, OTF lid favorite still. Still love it. I'm all about efficiency and ease of use. This is great. One-handed drinking, one-handed opening, driving in the car. I'm in vehicles a lot, so it's not like a wide mouth that when you hit a bump and you just poof, all over your face. Great. Some people recommended I try an Awala. I'm not a straw type of person. This has a straw. I don't use the straw. I just use this mouth lid just no straw in here, I just drink from it. But it kind of has a cool like dual mouth straw or just gulp feature in it. And it's an insulated bottle, they have a million colors and it's black and the reason I tried it out was I thought maybe I'll switch to a stainless steel but all of them were like screw top lids and something stupid and this was one of the only ones that just had a similar to the OTF where I could just chug out of that. It's been pretty good. I still prefer the Nalgene and OTF, but this is probably my second favorite and it's all black. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool gift idea, I think. And then camping stuff. So we got, oh, this is, yeah, camping off-road, I guess. This is another Agency 6 product. This is oh, basically a weapon, but this is a hitch shackle, essentially. So you put this into your two-inch receiver hitch, and then you can put a, a hard kind of D-ring type shackle or a soft shackle in here and use it as a recovery point on your vehicle. Much safer, much more effective than using a tow ball. I think everyone at this point probably knows you're not supposed to use a tow ball for recovery. It's not meant for that kind of like dynamic force. So this, and people have died from, from it literally. So this is a device that is specifically made for recovery for tow hitch receivers. So that thing's pretty cool. Jet boil, I don't really need to talk about it. Everyone knows what jet boils are, but if you don't have a jet boil, you should get one. I use them all the time. Fastest way to boil water. Fantastic, great camping item. Um, 
Then let's talk, yeah, I don't know, this kind of fits into the realm, I guess. Medkits, uh, Dark Angel Medical, they make great kits. They're here in Colorado as well, and they make EDC kits, full-blown kind of IFACs. They make group, like, bigger cases for whole family, and then they make little kind of boo-boo kits as well. So if you are looking for some med kits, Dark Angel Medical, I have a coupon code with them. I'll put it down below as well. Uh, and then like flashlights and whatnot. I was talking about the Olight O-Clip is pretty cool. They got some camping lights that are pretty cool as well. Uh, Claymore has some good stuff. They have these ones that clip onto your hat called cap-ons and some good kind of area lights as well. Uh, yeah, lights. I'll put... I'll link to them down below. Most of these things were just kind of placeholders so I could remember to talk about them. This is one I've talked about a few times before. A bunch of, you know, it's a random China light. A bunch of, bunch of companies make the same exact thing. Uh, but just get the cheapest one probably because they are all the same, even if one says it's... But I mean, all the ones that look exactly the same, they're all the same. It's like 33 feet. It's string light basically comes out and then has its self-contained reel that you wind it back up so if you're a person that likes the string lights but hated dealing with the mess this is kind of good for that usb rechargeable slick little camping light actually all you know not usually use it when i'm out with the bros but sometimes i will just for fun uh, but ashley likes that kind of stuff and the kids and everything so that's a great option for that and then maybe edc Everyone should own a Skeletool. If you don't have a Skeletool, get a Skeletool. If you have a friend that you don't know what to get them and they haven't talked about owning a Skeletool, get them a Skeletool. Uh, I, I love the Skeletool. I've been carrying the Arc recently just because uh, it has a slightly bigger tool set. I still think the, LS, the Skeletool is a superior EDC multi-tool because the Arc is a little chunky, but... I don't really mind in the Vertex Delta Stretches. If you need a pant recommendation still, the Vertex Delta Stretch 2.1, best pants. So I can carry anything in these pants without really noticing it. It's not uncomfortable or whatever. So I've carried, I've been carrying the Arc a bit and I've actually been double pocketing, uh, double mag pocket. So I have mag pockets, on a bunch of pockets in these pants. I keep two things in my right mag pocket and that is the Arc and actually a DeWalt uh, little box cutter. Now I've had a bunch of the little Milwaukee, what are they called? Whatever, the Milwaukee ones that are really popular. I saw a DeWalt one at Home Depot and I like it more than the Milwaukee ones actually. It just feels better, it's a little more comfortable, it's a little thinner, I believe. And I've been doing a lot of stuff where I'm just cutting, 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 and it would just dull the crap out of any knife. So I felt like, you know what, I'm just going to get a box cutter and replace the razor blades because they're dirt cheap because life is too short to spend sharpening knives all the time. So that's kind of EDC setup, I guess. Ooh, camping. This may be... We'll just say Magpul DACA pouch, pretty cool, I think. Falls into kind of that category. Good way to just carry miscellaneous stuff. Pretty sweet. And then we'll say radios. This is just a ra miscellaneous radio pouch I have. So the time is coming. Maybe sooner rather than later. I'm not sure. Who knows? Where you will wish you had better camo gear where maybe the power will go down or cell phones will go out or whatever. I've invested a fair bit of time and money into uh, amateur radio. So HF and VHF and UHF radios are all kind of different. Uh, but if you know nothing but just want to get something that bare minimum, Baofeng, UV5R or equivalent, there's a handful of companies that make pretty good ones as well. Baofeng's kind of the gold standard of cheap, crappy radios. I have a bunch of them. I have some nice radios, and I have some cheap, crappy radios, and they all have their place. But if you don't want to get into radio or whatever, you should really figure out a comms plan. But if you don't, and you're just like anti, at least get a few Baofengs that you can kind of hand out or whatever. 
or just use and get a little booklet or down, you know, print out a PDF from the internet about how to use it. And that could, could save your life, could at least come in handy. Let's talk kind of clothing, actually. So I've been at this, in this era of my life, I'm, for a lot, for a big chunk of my life, I was like very technical performance oriented clothing, like get the best insulation and the best water resistance and this and the lightest weight, most packable, you know, best kind of material, everything, which is cool. Nothing against that. I'm not like saying, oh, I've moved on, Pat, but I have kind of moved on past that to where I do care about that stuff. But most of my life now is more just kind of like rugged. Can I beat it up? Is it work more like workwear even? Uh, and just kind of more time like leathers and canvases. I'm just kind of entering that era of my life. For Actually, a lot of people have been asking about this. Surprisingly, this watch band, just kind of like a leather watch band for my Apple Watch Ultra uh, because I am still a tech, tech nerd and I use my watch for so much so much tech stuff, whether that's, you know, checking weather or sending texts or asking to doing calculations or like all kinds of stuff. I don't care that much about the health aspects. I just care. I just like having a little computer on my wrist. So I'm not on my phone as much and I can handle a lot of tasks on here. Anyway, I was using a regular kind of sport band on it and I got an ad for like a leather band. And then I found basically the same thing on Amazon for way, way, way cheaper that as far as I can tell and from the reviews, is basically the same thing as the overpriced one. So I got it and it just classes up, classes up the Apple Watch a little, just kind of makes makes me feel like not a little city boy wimp, right? <laughs> With the Apple Watch Ultra anyway. Leather, that's how I was getting into, kind of leather and kind of just, you know, I just wear Henleys all the time or just kind of basic, basic clothing. Oh, this hat while we're on the, kind of topic I, a bunch of people asked me about this hat when i did my how i made this money video this is a jack car hat so jack gave me this hat and i believe he sells i don't know if he sells the exact one but a very similar one on his website so this is a fj60 on my hat this was my i kind of bust this out in the winters this is i don't even know if they make it anymore honestly so it might not be good for a gift guide video i'll have to check out uh, outdoor research, I believe it's called Whitefish, the Whitefish hat, uh, and it's just kind of a goofy hat, but I love it. I do have a mullet right now for people that are asking. I decided one night just to cut myself a mullet. Anyway, I love this hat. It kind of looks like I got like floppy ears in it, but I like hat bills for to protect me from the sun, and... This keeps my ears warm. You can even button it underneath like this. It's got little kind of like, it comes with like a full mask even. I never use it, but then you can zip it into this little pocket on the side. It's a very cool hat. It's my favorite hat. It's not a one size fits all though. So you kind of got to get it specific to your size. This is like a camo. I think they've released them in different colors through the years. I have a couple of them. Actually, I realized my mic was on my hat, so that audio might have been a little jacked up. So, oh, so kind of like rugged. I've always loved flannels, but I'm getting more, you know, I just, I basically live in flannels a lot of the year here in Colorado. This is a flannel that I designed with Vertex. It's actually called the Last Line Flannel. It's in several colors. There's going to be a few different types coming out kind of in the line. It's the best flannel. It's got hand pockets. It's got pockets everywhere. It's got snaps instead of buttons. It is the best. It's the best flannel. If you like flannels, even if you don't like flannels, you should get the last line flannel. It's vertex.com slash last hyphen line, I believe. Uh, and then they, Vertex actually makes one of my favorite kind of technical jackets. So I was talking about how I was moving to kind of canvas and stuff, but still a lot of times a lightweight, super insulated, warm jacket is the best. So this is, this packs down pretty small. It's very light. It's very comfortable and it is deceptively warm. It's called like the integrity 
plus P or something like that. It's still kind of my go-to like warm, lightweight, you know, water repellent jacket. But if I'm like doing work, I've showed this jacket in the past too, actually. This, oh, this one too. Both these jackets I've shown. This is a cool, uh, I believe it's called the Law Hoodie, but it's like a canvas, kind of almost like a Carhartt type jacket. I built my house wearing this jacket and I still have it and beat it. I should, you know, it's kind of faded now and I should probably put some kind of coating on it to try to refinish it or whatever, but it's just, it's been a solid jacket. Not nearly as warm as that one, honestly, even though it's much thicker and heavier, but it's rugged. It's just, it's been a great jacket. And then when I just want to kind of look cool, uh, this is a waxed canvas jacket from, Technically, it's flint and tender, but it's a huckberry jacket that's made in the U.S. as well, which is cool. And it's the flannel-lined trucker, I believe. And it's just, it's a good jacket, and it's, like, rugged and everything, but it just looks cool. Like, when I just want to, like, look cool, I don't know how else to say it. This is kind of the jacket I go for. And so in addition to kind of canvas jackets and leather and whatnot, I'm kind of also, I'm realizing that I can't see it, my screen is tiny back there. I can't really see how I look, but I may my eyes may be shadowed at how I have this light set up. Anyway, the leather era of my life. I've always liked boots, I've all, but I've worn shoes a lot. And then now I've just kind of transitioned to wearing, I mean, I wear boots pretty much all year round, but sometimes shoes and I wear Crocs and whatnot. But in the winter, especially like once the snow starts setting in and once the cold temps start setting in at night and whatnot, I pretty much leave the house in boots and boots alone. And I've had all kinds of boots, Columbia boots, and I've loved Danner boots for many years. The Mountain 600s are great, and I've had the Solomon Quest 4D Ultra X Thin. Those are great boots as well. Uh, and yeah, I've had a lot of boots. I made, I, I got these boots at some point, I guess a couple years now. These are the Lems. These are wide toe box, barefoot boot. I don't know, I saw, I saw an ad or a YouTube, I don't remember how I came across it, but I was like, oh, I should try them out. And I got these boots and they kind of spoiled me with how comfortable they were. I never really noticed how cramped my toes were in normal boots. Danners and all kinds of boots. Keens are a little bit wider, we'll get into that. Anyway, I got this boot. And this company only really makes one boot that I like, to be honest, and it's the Boulder Summit. It's this boot right here. So I have this in, in brown and I have it in black. And then I was kind of like, I need to try out some more boots. So I made this boot video and then I got a bunch of people emailed me and DM'd me and whatnot, all these boot, like all these real boot guys that are like really, really into boots, which is cool, nothing against that. I'm not that into boots. I'm not gonna spend $600 on a pair of custom boots or anything like that. Uh, but I do like I do like boots. So one recommendation that someone gave me, thanks for the recommendation, was the Keen San Jose. I got these in wide, and this is a great boot as well. I still think the Keen, the the Lems Boulder Summit's probably still my favorite boot, even after all these. This boot is very wide though and very comfortable. Again, I got the EE width or whatever, and Keens are just kind of wider boots. This is a good boot as well. Now this boot, I think I actually had before the Lems, and this boot actually, funny enough, I think I got, I might be mistaking it, but I think I got because I was, I saw this pair of boots, I think, or I saw some article about The Last of Us, the dude that, play, that plays in the TV show, The Last of Us, not the based on the video game. And he, the dude, I think, wore these boots. And these are Irish setter, like, elk hunter boots or something like that. And I just thought the boots looked rad. And I was like, I need, like, a high, another, I want to, I have mostly kind of, like, low, mid boots. I have a couple high boots, but I didn't have, like, a leather, cool-looking, rugged, high boot. So I bought this boot, and I like it a lot, but I just don't wear these boots that often. I'll do them when I'm, like, out in the snow a bunch or whatever. Anyway, I bought this boot and kind of actually kind of beat them up a bit, but really liked this boot. So I researched uh, more Irish Setter boots, which are, I guess, I don't know much about them. Made by, they're like a 
I buy Red Wings, so Red Wings shoes is maybe the parent company to Irish Setter. Again, I'm not really a boot guy. This is my Christmas gift. This is my Christmas gift from Ashley. She was reluctant on letting me even use it for the video, but I thought, hey, I've never actually talked about a Christmas gift that I'm getting in the Christmas gift video. So anyways, I was researching more boots and I landed on these boots that I really wanted to try. So this is my Christmas gift. And these are the Irish Setter Wing Shooters. I got these in wide as well. They're not quite as wide as the Lems or even the Keens. They sell this boot in an extra wide, which maybe I'll get instead of these, but with the black soles, they only came in wide. So they have like normal, wide, and extra wide. So this is wide. I wish it was a little wider, but I really, like this is a beautiful boot. Every, every boot, every pair of pants, every jacket, every hat of mine, always, I don't really separate my regular, like I don't have nice stuff. Well, I have, I have nice stuff, but I don't have like stuff that I keep nice. Like I don't have special shoes for going out, right? I'll just, if, well, I, we don't go out much, but if I need something a little nicer, I'll just take my least beat up pair of whatever and my newest pair or whatever. So those are certainly my nicest looking boots. And those would be like my nice boots, but they're not going to be. So they're just going to get beat up. Anyway, boots. I've really kind of been getting into getting into boots. Not really getting into boots because I'm not trying to like get a shoe collection on my wall. Or I just like wearing boots, but I like wearing, you know, different boots sometimes. I don't just I'm not like a get one. Like I have multiple vehicles and I have multiple boots. That's kind of how how I am. So anyway, but I use them and I beat them up and I abuse them. So anyway, boots. Boots are cool. I think I think we should make boots cool. I mean, boots are cool in certain crowns. Are, I think we should just globally make boots cool again because they are cool. Ah, uh, so boots, and we're kind of on clothes. Let's kind of do bags and whatnot. I won't really talk about it because I did a whole video on it, but this bag, the Urban Ghost, would be a great backpack. This is my favorite EDC bag. Uh, there's a duffel. This is actually the Fieldcraft Survival duffel. They make these in a couple sizes. And the cool thing about this stuff, well, my Glover gave this to me. I don't actually, I haven't actually used it, but it is a cool duffel. I just have a lot of other duffels. Haven't used this duffel, but it's worth showing you how it can be loaded out. It's got some Velcro. You can put some pouches on top. And the cool kind of unique thing about the Fieldcraft duffels are they have color coded internal pouches that you can pull out. So you can use your own, and there's also little Velcro tags on here so you could label them. So you can kind of piece together certain componentry in these pouches that were designed to fit into the duffel bag. And I like orange as well. So it's a cool duffel option there. Well, just launch that. Fieldcraft also, Mike designed this uh, backcountry carrier. It's essentially, this goes over your shoulders and it's like a chest rig with three pouches. So for kind of the backcountry to carry your gears, your binos or your Glock or whatever, your bed kits, you could use it for fishing, you could use it for hunting, you could use it for all kinds of stuff. Really cool, a really cool carrier as well. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of a bag. And then this bag that I think hopefully has launched, I think it'll probably launch basically the day or the day before I post this video. This is a new bag. This is another collab uh, with me and Vertex. So this is their long walks pack. Their kind of lightweight, minimal backpack setup. But I worked on a custom color scheme, kind of a, a last line colors. I don't know what this is going to be called, the last line signature long walks or something. But we got little pops. We got a little bit of multicam black, a little bit of multicam black. And then we did this green that kind of matches the green of the multicam black on here and blacked out with a couple kind of green accents in the little pockets and whatnot. Anyway, this is the long walk. This is a limited 
if you want it, you got to get it now because once it's gone, it's gone. All of these limited runs that I do with Vertex, I've, I don't know how many emails I got of people wanting to buy like the limited duffel run that I did and you can't. It's gone, it's gone. The, the flannel probably will be around for a bit, but this bag, if you want it, get it because when it's gone, it's gone. This is another cool Vertex duffel. This is actually one I've been using. It's kind of been my primary duffel. This is called, what is it called? The RLD? RLT? I kind of forget. One of those things though, but pretty minimal duffel. They have it in a 50 and an 80 liter. And I've been loving them. Actually, I didn't like them at first. I was kind of like, eh, I don't really like them. I, didn't, I was even talking, Talon got some and he, he liked them. And I was like, I don't really like them. But I've come around and now I, I like it a lot. I don't know. It was just took me, it took me actually using the duffel, actually putting it to use to be like, I actually like it. So this is kind of the main duffel I've been using. And then let's talk, I guess, clothing gloves. We've, we've talked, I've talked about this in previous ones, mechanics, gloves. I have like just the regular leather, just regular leather gloves that you get at any kind of hardware store. I use those a lot. I use those a lot, a lot but also mechanics I keep everywhere. So just the regular mechanics or the fast fits. And then I really like the impact, the impact 3.0 ones as well with the little kind of knuckle protectors and some padding in some places you may hit. Gloves are great. I missed this earlier in the camping section. So I have, a, I have too many, I have too many mugs and bottles and everything. This winter, I kind of want to do some, I don't know, not necessarily bushcraft so much, but like some winter survival type stuff. Even if it's just in my backyard, I just want to go kind of dick around in the elements and, you know, just boil up some water and just kind of survive in the cold, you know? And ideally, I don't have to drive 10 hours to do it. So like literally, I may just... There may be a blizzard in the forecast and I'll be like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go hang out in my backyard, which is just the forest in the mountains. Uh, it's the same place as if, if I drove five hours and hiked 30 miles, that's my backyard basically, except my house is right there, obviously. Uh, but the weather conditions would be the same. So I kind of want to do that. So I have a bunch, so I kind of just bought this single wall. I wanted a little shit here, something that I could just kind of boil. Uh, I'm not saying this is good. This is a this is Gearland brand. This is a random China one, so it's probably not not the best out there. But I wanted very specifically a single walled water bottle, stainless steel, that I could boil water in the water bottle or whatever if I wanted to. That nested inside of it, also a stainless steel cup that could be a pot as well. That also had a lid. Now I had all of these things separately multiples of them there's no reason to have bought this but whatever i wanted it all in one thing so i got it this has got a oh an interesting kind of like handle holder as well it comes with anyway so that's something that i'll link down below for if somebody wants that exact setup i searched around quite a bit to find exactly this. Uh, I haven't even used it yet, so I may report back later whether that falls apart or not. Oh, more stuff in here. It's like a little spork. Thing comes with everything. Uh, and then, so let's kind of get into tools and whatnot, a little more miscellaneous. These are uh, Magpul Explorers. I wear these sunglasses all the time and I get asked about them pretty much anytime someone sees me in a video wearing them. What sunglasses are those? They're the Magpul Explorers. I believe in protecting my eyes. So they're impact rated lenses, UV protection as well, obviously. And my eyes are kind of sensitive to the light. I don't really know why. Sharpies are always good. The twin tip Sharpies, I carry them. They're kind of part of my EDC as well. 
Uh, I'll link some pens that I like, just some regular writing utensils. And then I've talked about these before as well, but these are the metallic Sharpies. So these are you know gold, bronze, silver, whatever. But if you have a black Sharpie, you need to write on a black thing. It doesn't really show up. So these metallic Sharpies are kind of like paint pens. They, they show up on black. One of the main uses I get out of these is if I get, I have a lot of different like battery chargers and what, actually I'll talk about battery, like solar generator type things. But the power brick on the, actually they're, most of them are moving to not having power bricks. They're just the, the standard plug in the back, which is great. But anytime there's a power brick, before I forget what it is, I'll write what it is with one of these Sharpies on the power bricks. While we were making that transition, a uh, battery pack, you know, a little portable battery generator type thing, your Goal Zeros, Blue Eddies, your EcoFlows, Jackeries, all those things, those are great to have. I have a bunch of them. And recently, my buddy Danny in Washington in the Seattle area, I guess they had some crazy winds. I think it was like off coast tornado or something. Was that a hurricane? I don't know, something. But crazy, like 100 mile an hour winds, and Danny was, and a bunch of people were out, out of power, maybe you, were affected out of power for three or four days, I think. And so he was using just, he had only, he only had a little one. Uh, and then his brother-in-law brought him a bigger one. Anyway, to like just charge stuff and power devices and refrigerator and whatnot. So good for the end of the world, but also good for just kind of normal stuff. One of those batteries would be great. So now we're kind of getting into miscellaneous tools and whatnot. So this is the this is my most used tool out of all my tools. I'm a big DeWalt guy. I have dozens and dozens and dozens of 20 volt and 60 volts of their tools. I use a lot of them. I built, built my house, obviously, but more often I'm just doing stuff, working, building chicken coops and working on this. I'm going to be getting my garage insulated actually this week, spray foamed, and then I'm going to build out the whole interior on that. Anyway, my most used tool of them all is this little DeWall DCF850 impact. Uh, not everyone knows how to use an impact, so you may be better off with a drill, but drill impact, if you know what you're doing, is the best combo. And I use this all the time. It's super compact. And this has the little power stack batteries. This is the little like two amp hour, 1.7 amp hour. You can get an all, basically all black, not quite all black, but a blacked out version of the power stack, which is subtle, but it looks cooler. And it's the same price on Amazon anyway. And it's like the oil resistant power stack kind of dealio. So it's more for automotive applications. So it's probably something different, but same price as regular power stack and looks better. So that this is like i don't know how old you can tell because it's when ryobi before white ryobi went to their like lime green color this is like the old blue bluey color anyway this is a little uh thermometer so it shoots out a little laser to show you where it's reading and so it can tell you the surface temps of everything i use this a lot I've been using it more recently with the wood-burning stove and checking temps of the walls and having different fans and whatnot. But I've used this for years all the time for all kinds of stuff, just a little thermometer. Uh, you can't get this one, obviously, anymore, but I'll link, you know, maybe some down below. Tie-down stra straps, I really like. These are the cargo buckles. I use them all the time. Uh, they're probably my favorite heavy-duty. They're my favorite heavy-duty straps of all. Then they have uh, smaller stuff. This is a front runner. This is a snatch it. I use this to tie stuff down all the time. Perfect bungee. Uh, the Beeler Flex Perfect Bungee. They make a variety of great bungees I use all the time as well. And then there's a recent one I tried out that I like a lot as well called Torque Strap. And it's kind of like a snatch it with just a regular cam strap. Very cool as well. I'll link all those down below. Headlamps are great. I'll link some options. This is random. This was, I think I saw that, I think I got an ad for this actually and, and bought it. It's E-D-J-Y. No affiliation with them. I don't even know if they're sold on Amazon or if I can get any kickback or anything, but it's just like a nice finger and toenail clipper. Uh, 
I actually lost mine. And I just had the same cheap piece of crap. You know, it was probably from the dollar store. I don't know. I mean, probably wasn't from the dollar store, but it was like maybe the dollar bin at Walmart. I don't know. And I had it forever, and they just sucked, and they shot fingernails everywhere, and I don't know how this ad targeted me, but I bought it, and I like it. Not like life-changing, but I needed a new set of fingernail clippers anyway, and so I got them, and I like them. They're good. It's not a tool, kind of a tool. Fisker's shears, I love Fisker's axes as well. I've talked about them in past gift guides and still love them and still use them all the time. But a pair of shears, just a pair of heavy duty shears. Now this is different than your like trauma shears. This is more just like general purpose items, but this is the best pair. I've, I've bought several pair of kind of like heavy duty shears and the Fisker's are the best for sure. I think the Gorilla Tape, still these one inch rolls make good stocking stuffers. I use them all the time. A variety of little wrenches. This is a little adjustable wrench. This one is a channel lock one. This is very small, but gets quite wide. Uh, it gets to, looks like 25 millimeters, which is over an inch on this little, uh, little adjustable wrench. So this is probably like the one that's very good. It's my favorite. I've talked about these little ones as well from Tecton or Crescent or whatever, these little four inch guys. They're pretty cool as well. And then everyone's favorite. I don't use them as much, but I use them from time to time. I have a couple, couple sizes. These are the baby ones, little Nipex channel lock type pliers. I think everyone actually, I don't know my, my other pairs are out in the yard, and I think I got one that's in my tractor toolbox and whatnot, but lineman pliers. I may have talked about lineman pliers in the past. I don't actually remember. This is a smaller set of Craftsman. Uh, I would suggest getting the biggest set of lineman pliers. Like, I use the cutter. on The cutter on lineman pliers is great, you know, cutting Romex or whatever. And I don't know, I just use these a lot. Like I, I grab them for just plier stuff and they're great. I'll link some screwdrivers down below. This is a little Klein kit that has a bunch of bit storage in here and it's ratcheting, which is kind of cool. Uh, and yeah, I've talked about this for sure. This is the Spec Ops tape measure. I've tried a lot of tape measures, all the good traits the tape measure, the fat maxes and everything. And the spec ops is not just like a marketing, you know, they donate some money to veterans organizations or whatever. It is, is a legitimately good tape measure. Uh, paracord, everyone should have paracord. Get yourself some paracord. This is a thousand foot. Well, buy them by the thousand foot. And then, uh, this is kind of a depressing thing to end on, not depressing, just kind of weird, but I've, I may have talked about these as well. This is a little socket set, a pretty compact little socket set. Now I have probably legitimately a, over a dozen different socket sets, and this is the one I just use the most. It's just a 3 8 drive, has deep and shallow sockets and extensions, metric and SAE, little toggle adapter, all in one little kit. So just what I need, and it doesn't, you know, it goes, only goes up to 19. So if I need bigger stuff, I have bigger ones, but this is the one I use like almost, almost always. There's one other thing I saw on the ground. I think I grabbed, and I think I've talked about this as well. A little blower. Again, I'm a big time DeWalt guy. Like I'm heavily invested in the DeWalt 20 volt, 60 volt ecosystem. So I'm a big time DeWalt guy, but I have some M12 Milwaukee stuff. Uh, some kind of specialty tools, their transfer pump and some other stuff. Anyway, the blower, I have DeWalt blower, I have Ryobi blowers even, and then I have this little kind of compact little DeWalt blower. This is the one I probably use the most just for like little blowing tat, you know, it's not a legit full on like yard leaf blower that does real work, but like, I just like the engagement of it, it's nice. Cool. All right, guys, I'm about to fall asleep. I got to film this video, but I just wanted to do it. Annual gift guide video. It's important. Next year, 
I keep telling myself this every year, but next year things are going to slow down for me in terms of how busy I am. And I'm going to set, I think I said this last year, actually, but I'm going to set a reminder to do this video earlier and put a little more intentional thought into it. But thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. It means the world to me that you, that you watch my videos. It's, I really appreciate you guys. Oh, dang. That's what I had a toy here. I had a, I had a few things I didn't talk about. I think LLOD beanies, if you want LLOD fleece beanies. Snag those. I was, yeah, looking at new merch options. So I bought a bunch of just like plain hats to really see which ones. I I don't just like, you know, get the cheapest crap hats off of the website or what. Like these fleece beanies are made in the U.S. even. So I put some intentionality, intentional thought, and actually just get samples of stuff before I turn it into merch. Uh... I'm not just trying to make a, but I don't make much money on merch, like almost nothing. Like merch is more for fun than anything else. So if I'm going to make a hat, I want to get the best hat that I actually want to wear myself and then, you know, figure out how to best way to slap a logo on it. So I don't know. That's not really gift guide related because this isn't even out, but, or any of these, this is just one of many hats that I've been testing. Beanies are out though. So you get beanies. I got, I got them in three colors. I had this, this is a GTR, this is a toy GTR. If you wanna really treat yourself or your husband to the ultimate gift, buy them my Nissan GTR. Kinda of joking, but also kinda, of, I think I'm gonna sell it. I think I'm gonna sell it. I think I'm, I've been deliberating on it a lot of time. So if you want a super clean, super low, under 10,000 mile, 2017 Nissan GTR full bolt on multicam black bronze wheel sick so sick I'll put a photo of it on if you want the ultimate Christmas you can buy mine it's not for sale yet but you can buy it it will be over a hundred grand though just so you know if you if you don't track GTR R35 GTR prices that yeah GTR is a cool way to end the video right Buy my GTR for Christmas? I don't know if it is. I don't know. I'm not good at these things anymore. I used to be when I just cared more about random gear, and now I just care about things that work. All right, I'm going to edit this video. And then go sleep in my new mattress. So thanks for watching. Leave me a comment down below if there's something that I should try. Again, I'll update my video description or go to llod.us slash gear if I have time to make that. But if not, I think that URL has all my old gear videos. So if you're just looking for links, still a good place to go. All right, guys. Until next time, take care.